Ever wonder why sneakerheads get nostalgic about a shoebox? Well, today's your lucky day, because in this video, we're looking back at all the Nike SB box eras. The styles, the stories, the legacy. Stick around, you won't want to miss this. The Orange Box Era, March 2002 to December 2002. The rise of the SB brand started with the Orange Box Era. This box was nothing special and resembled just the simple Nike boxes from that era. Let's travel back to the early 2000s. After a few hiccups trying to break into the skate scene, Nike's Mark Parker turned to one of his trusted friends, Sandy Brodicker, who really was the heart and soul of Nike. As part of Sandy's strategy, they got some popular skaters on board like Danny Supa and Reese Forbes and gave them the freedom to design their own shoes. The Orange Box series officially came out in 2002 and people instantly fell in love after seeing the first SB Dunk surfacing in the market. Among these were the Nike SB Dunk Low Molders, a white and blue design by Richard Molder which gave a nod to his LA background. Then there was the Nike SB Dunk Low Chocolate, another of Molder's creations. But this one was in black suede and brown soles crafted in memory of Kenan Milton. Danny Supa introduced the Nike SB Dunk Low Supa with a standout blue and orangish theme, reminiscent of the New York Knicks. As the year neared its end, there was a notable collaboration between Nike, SB, and Supreme, resulting in the Nike SB Dunk Low and Supreme black and white cements, a design that took inspiration from the legendary Air Jordan 3. Following these releases, Nike SB started gaining real traction. When big names like Gino Lanucci and Richard Molder got involved and designed their unique Dunk Low SB colorways, it was evident that Nike had established a genuine connection with the skateboarding community. The Silver Box Era, March 2003 to September 2004. Following its initial success, Nike SB was gearing up for its second act. The Silver Box Era is mostly remembered by collectors for its sheer inventiveness. Nike's approach during this time was to let the shoes speak for themselves, giving only color hints on the box. Fans quickly took to this, naming shoes based on what they reminded them of, like Todd Jordan's Green Dunk. People started calling it Dunk SB Hulks, and the Olive Dunk Low with those bright laces? That was quickly named Jedi's, probably because it's resemblance to Yoda's lightsaber. But not all names were flattering. A dunk with a mix of blue, brown, and green got labeled as barf. Some shoes also raised eyebrows for other reasons. The Homer Dunk Lows seemed to give a nod to the Simpsons without stepping on any toes. There was also the Heineken Dunk Low. It had this green design with a red star that was too close to the Heineken beer logo, causing a stir. During this time, Nike dropped some standouts. The Paris Dunk, designed by French artist Bernard Buffet, showcased distinct colorways capturing the essence of the Parisian landscape. The Tokyo Dunk was the perfect shoe for any occasion with its mostly beige top and brown soles. Meanwhile, the Cali Dunk was crafted by California-based artist Todd Bertrude, sported a brown and green color palette mirroring the iconic hues of California's state flag. But not everything was a hit. Shoes like the EQ and URL, while technically advanced, didn't catch on as much as the dunks did. The Pink Box era, September 2004 to December 2005. Some of the most coveted SB pairs have been released in a pink box. Nike's Pink Box era was all about collaborations and thinking outside the box. San Francisco's Huff store went all hippie vibes, creating a dunk high with cracked leather and tie-dyed inlays, paying homage to the city's history. London's Slam City Skates introduced rubber toe caps and swooshes which wore away to expose vivid blue leather underneath. But collaborations weren't just with skate shops. Music legends also had a say. Collaborations with brands like The Melvins, Uncle, and De La Soul were dropped, with the De La Soul release grabbing attention with graphics straight from their three feet high and rising album cover. Tiffany inspired design from Diamond Supply Co. with its faux alligator skin was a bold statement. Not to mention SB's partnership with Paul Rodriguez in 2005. 
The release of the Zoom Air Paul Rodriguez, popularly known as the P-Rod 1, broke ground as Rodriguez became the first skater to have a pro model with Nike. The Pink Box Air's biggest hype? The Pigeon Dunk Low, designed by Jeff Staple. Exclusively sold in NYC, its release turned chaotic, with fans nearly rioting, pushing the NYPD to intervene. This frenzy didn't just create headlines, it practically pushed sneaker culture into the spotlight. Stoozy's Cherries Dunk Lows sported pastel pink on the sides and front with a light brown body. The pink era is also notable for the introduction of the Nike SB Dunk Mid, which was released in several colorways during this time. The shoe released during this era are highly coveted by sneaker collectors and enthusiasts and are considered some of the most iconic Nike SB shoes of all time. The Black Box Era, February 2006 to September 2007. Now, this period has its ups and downs. Nike SB was facing a bit of a dilemma. Sneakerheads who were super into collecting and maybe flipping kicks on eBay started overshadowing the brand's initial vision. You know, the whole skate-centric vibe set by Brodicker. On top of that, a spike in dunk production numbers seemed to reduce their exclusivity a bit. Some kicks even ended up on discount racks. But on the bright side, collaborations kept things interesting. Nike SB tied up with musical acts like Dinosaur Jr., MF Doom, and even this Dutch band called Simon and Kipski. The Nike SB Dunk High MF Doom in particular was a major hit. Teaming up with rapper MF Doom, it featured a black and gray design and unique ostrich leather in Doom's logo. It's now a top collector's item. The Three Bears pack in 2006 took inspiration from Goldilocks. Each shoe represented a bear, Papa, Mama, and Baby. The Dunk Low Hawaii had a vibrant island vibe, and the Dunk High Dinosaur Jr. came in a metallic silver tone leather with purple accents. The Gold Box Era, October 2007 to March 2009. During the Gold Box Era, SB fans noticed a dip in collaborations, which quieted some of the buzz. But 2007 ended with a big splash. Nike introduced the What the Dunk for their skate film, Nothing But The Truth. This shoe was wild. It combined elements from various iconic SB releases over five years. You could spot hemp, tweed, denim, and more. The catch? It was ultra limited. Released only in cities showing the film's premiere. Today, it's a collector's gem often fetching prices higher than the shoe it was originally inspired by. Then, there's the Red Lobster Dunk Low. Partnering with Concepts, a Boston sneaker shop, the shoe was mainly red, had a lobster graphic inside, and even sported a rubber lobster claw band around the toe. And who could forget that eerie Freddy Krueger Dunk Low? It took cues from the horror movie villain with its colors mimicking Freddy's iconic sweater and blood splatter all over it. The Blue Box Era, April 2009 to June 2012. As the dunk spotlight began to dim, Stefan Janowski was brainstorming his own shoe concept. He came up with a vintage inspired low tech model. It felt more like a classic boat shoe with a vulcanized sole and leather laces. The shoe became a smash hit, overshadowing even Nike's other pro models at the time. Despite other notable releases from pros like Omar Salazar and Brian Anderson, it was Janowski's shoe that cemented its legacy. The same year saw skate pro Eric Costin leave Lackey for SB. To honor his LA Lakers fandom, two special Costin 1 models were designed, one merging elements from the Zoom Kobe 6. The latter was so exclusive that only 24 pairs were made, each presented in a wooden humidor. The Blue Box era saw more than just signature pro models. The Dunk SB, largely unchanged till 2011, got a revamp with the Dunk NT. It boasted heel lining pods, an updated outsole design, and Phylon midsoles. Among the standout release of this era were the Blue Lobster and Yellow Lobster Dunk Lows in 2009, a sequel to the previous collaboration with Concepts. Their marine theme and special wooden box packaging made them collectors' favorites. 2010's Skunk Dunk sported a shiny green-purple colorway, 
the 2011 SB94 High Supreme, a collaboration with Supreme, channeled the classic Nike Bruin basketball shoe, making it highly sought after. The blue box era, with its ups and downs, certainly left an impression on skate shoe and sneaker culture. The Taped Box Era, July 2012 to December 2013. This one is epic. A tape printed Nike SB logo on the box with a text on it. The text on the tape said, delivered from the future in a cardboard box. This era's collaborations like the one with Levi's and a throwback to Supreme's original Dunk Low made waves. But it was evident that Nike SB's golden era sparkle had dimmed even more. In 2012, Nike SB paired with streetwear juggernaut Supreme for the Dunk Low Supreme Red Cement. Drawing inspiration from the Air Jordan 3, its red and gray design became a hallmark, solidifying its place among iconic SB shoes. Another notable mention from 2013 is the SB Blazer Mid Neck Face, a collaboration with artist Neck Face. Its black, white, and yellow palette adorned with distinctive net face graphics paid tribute to the artist's skateboarding roots. This too was a collector's gem. 2013 also witnessed the launch of the Dunk High Mental Blade. Skate brand Skate Mental did something never seen before on an SB Dunk. They made the shoe look like an inline skate by virtually adding inline skate wheels to the design on its outsole. In addition to that, they added a strap over the tongue, just like with an inline skate. The Tiffany Box Era, December 2013 to December 2019. 2014 saw Nike SB embracing nostalgia with the onset of the Tiffany Box Era. Aiming to reignite its earlier appeal, this period saw a slew of exciting launches. A notable mention was the return of Diamond Supply's Tiffany Dunk in a high cut version. Furthermore, in an homage to the 80s, the Air Jordan 1 was officially added to SB's roster. SB collaborated with Dogtown Pioneer Craig Stichek and skating giant Lance Mountain. The outcome? A mix of the iconic bread and royal Jordan Hughes. Mismatched and enveloped in paint, capturing the essence of the AJ1's golden era. On the innovation front, 2015 saw SB revamping the dunk at Ashad Ware's behest minimizing its inner pattern. But 2017 was pivotal as it introduced the Zoom Dunk Elite Low, a total transformation from the classic. Coincidentally, its muted gray and blue tones mirror the very first Dunk SB sample, harking back to its origins 15 years prior. Several standout models adorn this period. 2019's SB Dunk High Walk the Dog showcased Todd Bertrude's artistry with a lively green and brown palette and a polka dot printed on the sides, making it a collector's favorite. The SB Dunk Low BHM from 2015 was a tribute to Black History Month, presenting a black design coupled with a reflective multicolored heel. The 2018 SB Dunk High Watt the Dornbecker, a union with Dornbecker Children's Hospital, combined various Dornbecker sneaker designs with all sales proceeds donated to the hospital, making it not just unique, but also a charitable masterpiece. The Striped Box Era, January 2020 to March 2023. During Nike SB Striped Box Era, the brand successfully blended traditional skateboarding collaborations with high profile partnerships like the one with Travis Scott. This period marked a significant shift in Nike SB's collaborative approach with the brand moving from somewhat rebellious designs to official partnerships, teaming up with big names like Ben and Jerry's and The Grateful Dead. The era also saw innovative interpretations of the iconic swoosh from the shark-inspired Oski SB Dunk High to the flavor-filled swoosh of the Chunky Dunky. Noteworthy releases from this era include SB Dunk Low Travis Scott, which has a base of khaki color with the deep navy overlays that sport bandana designs. There's a mix and match feel with one swoosh logo in black and the other in pink. The middle section of the shoe has a touch of tartan plaid. There's also the oceanic theme 2021 SB Dunk High by Atlas Lost at Sea. The 2021 red and white SB Dunk by Frame Habibi featuring Arabic inspirations. And of course, the SB Dunk Low Sean Cliver. The shoe has ice blue velvet suede overlays with a snowflake pattern on the toe. Inside, the insole features a design of elves making toys in a workshop. 
the Sailbox era, March 2023 to present. The Sailbox era, Nike SB's latest chapter that commenced in March 2023, and several shoes from this era have already made a significant mark. We've got the Nike SB Dunk Low Yudo, designed by the talented Japanese skater Yuto Horigomi. This shoe sports a crisp gray and white combo. Then there's the Born and Raised Dunk Low. This one's a collaboration with the LA brand Born and Raised. It comes in a stark blue and white design. The shoe is inspired by 80s and 90s bandana patterns in typography. Its upper is made of full ring leather with a mix of unique features like a lenticular swoosh, perforated toe, and embroidered artwork. The sock liner sports a graphic of the Venice Pavilion. Noteworthy details include the on the turf tagline and the tongue and heel and a special and loving memory print on the lacing. If you're into colorful and fun designs, the Dunk Low Haritos might just catch your eye. Teaming up with the popular Mexican soda brand Haritos, this pair's vibrant green and orange shoe mirrors the soda's iconic packaging and gives the shoe a really unique look. And for those who love a blend of classic and contemporary, the Jordan 4 SB Pine Green is a game changer. The shoe underwent vital modifications to enhance its skateboarding performance without compromising its distinctive look. One significant upgrade is the pour-on forefoot sock liner, which ensures better flexibility, cushioning during impacts, and prolonged durability. With its blend of leather, suede, and rubber, and adorned with the signature SB branding and the Jumpman Flight logo on the tongue, the Nike SB AJ4 seamlessly bridges the gap between past and future. It's worth noting that there are also other boxes used for Nike SB releases, including the orange label and purple box. However, these boxes are mainly used for regular Nike SB shoes and not for limited edition collaborations or special releases. The sale box era is expected to continue for the foreseeable future and will likely see many more unique and highly sought after Nike SB releases. All of these eras have their own charms and nostalgic feelings. This makes me realize that within a few years, we will be looking back at today, saying it was one of the most epic SB Dunk eras. I'm glad we're still in time to capture this part of sneaker history in one video. If you liked it, please plug yourself by hitting that subscribe button. See you.